Now batting for the Indians, number two, Derek Jeter, number two. is going on guys rob carbone coming at you with another episode of bd4 no better way obviously tonight we're going to talk about the yanks great Derek jeter getting inducted into the hall he is now a hall of famer or he was on his way to the hall of fame well he'll be he will be elected in july but tonight was the night where it was solidified it is a guarantee now Derek Jeter, not that we didn't know, is making the Hall of Fame officially. And I am so glad, man. I am so happy for this guy. Just growing up and watching him. And before we even get into his on-field play, you know, and his, his his actual Hall of Fame talents and skills, how, how much of a professional was he, though? You know, he was a class act. This is a guy who played 20 years, right? 20 years in the big city of New York had to face the media, had to face with the Bronx crowd every night, hungry for winning and nothing else, and just all the scrutiny that came along with it, whatever he had to deal with, he dealt with. You know, he was a guy who was just humble, professional, classy, and did his job. He was a pro's pro. And it just, for 20 years, you know, 20 years doing this, just, it's the same thing every year. He was so cool, calm, and collected, dealt with it so perfectly, so professionally and you know he's just the guy you want to look up to when you want to teach your kids how to act you know how to what kind of persona you want them to have how to how to be humble you look at Derek Jeter you show them Derek Jeter right that's the guy you show everybody that's why he was the face of baseball for so long for you know he had such such a long wonderful career not only because he was great on the field but because of how professional he was and how he dealt with everything and how he worked so hard and he just made himself known simply because of his hard work, his hard efforts and his professionalism and he's just a true class act. So that was the first thing I want to, you know, that's the first thing I wanted, I wanted to talk about. Just wanted to get that out of the way that we not, you know, let's not just get caught up in how great he was on the field, but he was a Hall of Famer just because of his personality itself, man. And I know I, that sounds stupid, but it's it's true, man. He was just so, oh, man, he was such a professional out there. That's You have to admire that. You have to admire something like that. But, yeah, of course, his, let's get into it. His on-field play is the reason why he was voted into the Hall of Fame tonight, first and foremost, right? I mean, listen, I, I get that um, fans are upset he didn't get 100%, right? There was one... Um, asshole who didn't vote him in and I'm not going to spend too much time on that you know I don't want to give this guy attention clearly that's what this whole thing was he just wanted to, to to be that guy I guess although I know his name wasn't you know he's kind of anonymous right now but we're not going to spend time harping on that stressing over that man we're going to talk about Derek Jeter who how he's in the Hall of Fame because it doesn't matter how many people wanted him in versus how many people did not or person but it just matters that he's in, right? Because it's all there's no level when you're in the Hall of Fame. There's no levels to it. Of course, there's first ballot, second ballot, etc. But he made it on the first ballot and he's in. So what do we have? So many, and you know, just 
this is a guy who's just so great and so consistent for so long. So many signature moments over his career. So many signature moments. And that right there was the last signature moment of his career. And honestly, that at bat against Baltimore, and when I say that, if you're watching the video format of the podcast, you see the video of it. But if you're watching if you're listening to this on SoundCloud, you're not you're not seeing the video, but Right here, they're showing the uh, the Baltimore Orioles game, right? The, his last game as a Yankee at Yankee Stadium. His last game. And it was just the epitome of his career, right? Bottom of the ninth, the Yankees need a walk-off hit, and they got it. Not just, you know, they didn't get it by a home run. They got it by Derek Jeter settling for the simple single the other way. And that's what he has done his entire career. You know, that's why I loved him personally. That's why that's what made him so great as a player because he didn't try to overdo things. He didn't try to hit the ball 500 feet, try to, you know, stress exit velocity, try to uppercut with that launch angle bullshit. He was not about that. He was about playing fundamental baseball, being consistent, making contact first before worrying about power. And, and, and that's why he was great. You know, this isn't the guy who is stressing analytics, and this is that's why I like the, the Jeter. Jeter is one of the last breeds of, of the type of guys you're you're getting, um, you know, out of DJ LeMahieu, right? He's one of those Derek Jeter type of players. You know, Jeter was the last of that breed. You're not going to get many of those types nowadays who 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 hit for average, who stress batting average, right? He was a 310 career hitter. That's the thing people talk about when they talk about Derek Jeter. Not the homers, and that's perfectly fine, right? He did it by hitting singles and doubles, and that's perfectly fine. Let's stop getting caught up in the home runs and the power because you can still succeed, and Jeter showed it with his longevity and his five championship rings. You can still succeed by being a, a contact hitting, you know, slap hitter, if you want to call it that. This was a guy who did that successfully, and he showed that you could do it. It doesn't matter what era either. Derek Jeter did it successfully for years, years, and he made it known you don't have to be Mr. Strength, Mr. You know, you don't have to be 250 pounds of muscle, and you don't have to be sledgehammering friggin' tires like these idiots on the Yankees are doing today and getting hurt. This was just a pure athlete, a pure, just consistent hard worker. You know, I call him the Tim Duncan of baseball because he was Mr. Fundamental. He was Mr. Consistent, where he was never dominant. He never took over the game and won MVPs and all that. But he was so great because of how consistently um, consistently good he was. He was very, very good every single year, and that's what made him great. Um, so that's just so consistent. And then you talk about the postseason he never changed. If anything, he was a better player in the postseason, right? He, he continued to hit the ball. He continued to make the clutch play defensively. And yes, I said clutch. And yes, I said defense. Two things analytical people hate when talking about Jeter specifically. But, you know, this was a guy who didn't worry about that, man. He made the plays he needed to make. And honestly, if he was that bad of a shortstop, I don't think he would have lasted out there for 20 years. You know, A-Rob was the better player they talked about defensively, but... Hey, why wasn't he taking over a shortstop then? Jeter was a good enough shortstop to me. I don't want to get all into that though. I'm talking too much about specifics here, but just so happy this guy got in, man. And, and like I said, so many moments over his career. You could talk about the flip, the dive, Mr. November, um, 3000, this hit right here against, you know, oh, well, that's the uh, Rays hit, but the Orioles hit. Just so many great moments has made this guy such a great player in. And I couldn't be happier. I don't know what else to say, right? And just, he's getting so much praise tonight, which is huge. And I love to see it, you know. Chipper Jones, CC Sabathia, even players from other sports are, are, are congratulating him tonight. And that just goes to show how much of a famous um, figure Derek Jeter was, right? He wasn't just the Yankee player. It wasn't just known for New York. It wasn't just known around baseball, but he was known around the world, of, of around the U.S. just as this iconic, true athlete who you can just show your kids, you know. And the fact that so many people are showing so much support for this guy, it's just great to see, man. And, and I cannot wait for the day where he's officially elected and we get to watch his speech and everything like that. Because you know it's going to be a special moment, man. If we all if we all got emotional, you know, when, when um he hit that walk off against Baltimore, if we got all emotional um during his last at bat at Fenway when he got the infield single and 
was taken off the field for the final time. It's going to be something um, in July when he gets elected. But yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not gonna I'm not gonna make this one too long. We're gonna cut this cut this short tonight, about ten minutes. So I just wanted to to to, to, to appreciate this guy, man. Just so happy he's in, and I'm so happy that. that He's he just watching that interview tonight on MLB Network, right? Derek Jeter was talking about how how he was um, nervous. I think he used the word nervous tonight himself. And come on, no, you know damn well he was making it. But that just goes to show how humble of a dude he is, and, and how just down to earth he was. And that was the definition of Derek Jeter, man. Just. Oh, he was so great. So we're going to cut this one short, like I said. Just wanted to give him my praise and, and congratulate Derek Jeter tonight. So that's that, guys. We're going to cut this one short. Rob Carbone, episode 65 of BD4. Yanks Great gets in, and that is Derek Jeter, the Yanks Great we're talking about. I'll see you guys next time. All right, thanks so much for stopping by. All right, ciao.